gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes, it's every man, woman, and child for himself because it's the Ken Dodd Show. And here he is, the nut from Naughty Ash, Ken Dodd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure here this evening. And now, and now, I will swallow my other brother. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, I will swallow this man. Don't bother to remove your haversack, sir. <laughs> Why, Joe? Everybody's taking those pills, aren't they? <laughs> Get that ship out of here! <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you don't mind very much, I'd like to say a few words to me public. <laughs> me public, ladies and gentlemen and ditty people. I would like to say how highly honoured I am to be welcomed here today like a VIP. I've just been elected a VIP, Mrs. The Village Idiot's President. <laughs> <laughs> Yes? Which is the best way to bury St. Edmund? Dig a big hole and shove him in. Really? I think I'll have a word with all the motorists who are listening on their car radios. Calling all motorists. Are you there? If you are plagued with punctures, see your doctor at once. <laughs> what shall I do next? I know. I'll knock on this woman's door and run away. What do you want? Oh, um, did you know that Salisbury, spelt backwards, is Why Rub Silas? How dare you take that? Ow! Oh. Just one moment, lad. Mind the moggy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Who are you? My name is wee Johnny Laurie, much loved and respected Scottish actor of many years standing. Are you any good? I'm very articulate. Oh, you must be one of those articulated lorries. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of acting can you do? Anything. Pantomime? Try me. Make a noise like a pumpkin. Easy. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> You have won a tin of leg polish and a lightning tour of Broadcasting House. Lovely. Right. Well, here, you go through here. You can get changed through this door here. Right. Oh, help! 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 <laughs> By Jove. Leo loves a bit of Scotch beef now and again. Well, what do you know? Did you know that the 1st Battalion of the King's Own Macaroons is the only regiment allowed to march through the streets of Dundee with their kilts on upside down? Well, what do you know? Housewives, take the drudgery out of housework with Cheerio. The next time your kitchen sink is piled with dirty, greasy dishes and your husband comes home to you with his socks full of holes, say... Cheerio! <laughs> well, what do you know? Here is a recording of a lighthouse keeper falling out of bed. Ow! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Front door open. <laughs> well, what do you know? And the next question is from... David Evans. Mr. Chairman, I am unemployed and I have 18 children. Don't you think I should get some help from the government? You don't need any help. Well done! <laughs> Dear, dear a lot boy. of people. Pardon? My dear boy. I'm the moggy. <laughs> ah, I'm so enjoying being in this program with you, dear, dear boy. John, my old friend, it's wonderful to see a man like you at 87 and still performing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very pleasant surprise for you, dear boy. It gives me the greatest possible pleasure to present to you, on behalf of the Professional Entertainers Association, this gold medal, dear boy. Thank you, John. And by a very strange coincidence, it also gives me very great pleasure to present to you this gold plaque on behalf of the Amalgamated Actors Association. Wonderful. How did you know I was amalgamated? I saw you running for the bus earlier. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. I'm indeed honoured, as I'm sure you'll be when I hand you this silver trophy and plinth on behalf of the BBC. Right, thank you. Well, would you in turn accept from me this citation in guilt on velvet awarded by the Bootle Young Farmers Association? I will, and will you by the same token allow me to invest you with this magnificent tin cup which I hand to you on behalf of the Outer Hebrides Opera Company? Why not? Why not? And it's my hope that you will accept 
just as graciously this superb set of matching squeaking cushions on behalf of the Huddersfield Camel Breeders Association. <laughs> of course I'll accept it graciously. I'm not an imbecile. Well, accept it then. And will you accept from me this perfect left hook to the chin? Ooh, and you this clenched fist in your left ear hole. Oh, 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 you dickhead. Oh, 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 oh. for our visitors from overseas is the pageantry and colour to be found in our many traditional ceremonies. Not least of these is the Ceremony of the Keys held every day at this time in the courtyard of Naughty Ash Castle. So over now to Naughty Ash Castle for the handing over of the keys. Halt! Have ye the keys? I, I have the... Have I? Have I? Um, oh, about turn, quick march. <laughs> Halt! Aye, we have the keys. <laughs> Open ye the west gate. Aye, um, yeah. Okay. I shall open ye west gate, I hope. Have ye the key? I've got the wrong bunch. <laughs> we'll come in through ye west window. Left turn, quick march. We can now offer another really great attraction, not only for tourists, but for just about everybody tuned in now. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Jerry and the Pacemakers. When you walk through a storm, hold your hand up high and down. Be afraid of the dark At the end of the storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver song of love Walk on through the wind Walk on through the rain Dreams be tossed and blown Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you never walk alone. 
Have you ever been in bed trying to get off to sleep when the people in the house opposite come to the front door to say good night to their visitors after a party? Good night, Tom. Good night, George. Good night, Tom. Good night, Winnie. Good night, George. Good night, Bill. Good night, Bill. Good night, Winnie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Tom. Good night. George. Hello. Good night. Good night, Lord. Good night, Winnie. <laughs> good night, all. Good night. Good night, then. Good night, night Tom. Good, good night, Bill. See you in the morning, George. <laughs> good night. Good night, George. Good night. Good night, Winnie. Good night, Tom. Good night, Bill. Good night, Tom. Good night, then. Good night, George. Good night, Good night, Good night, Come along now. What's all this noise about? Well, we were just saying good night, Constable. Oh, we've had enough good nights for one night. Now move on. Oh, yes, thank you then. Good night, Constable. Good night, Tom. Good night, Winnie. Good night, Constable. <laughs> good night, then. Good night, Tom. Welcome to Pet's Corner. Charles. Norma. It's not that kind of Pet's Corner. <laughs> anyway, put that woman down, Charlie. You haven't got enough green stamps. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant four-footed pets. Like this little chap I've brought along with me. Ah, look at that. I can just see him all excited and wagging his tail. Come on, boy. Come on. Here, boy. Here, come on. <laughs> there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Aubrey. Aubrey the pig. <laughs> down, boy. Down, boy. He knows I've got a bucket of swill for him in my pocket. <laughs> Aubrey's a very unusual pig, aren't you, Aubrey? Yes, Ben. Hey, oh, now, do you hear that, missus? Because <laughs> he's a talking pig. He's what you call a budgery pig. <laughs> Isn't that right, Aubrey? Yeah, that's right, Ben. <laughs> hey, he's a clever lad. Now then, stop showing up, Aubrey. Put that trumpet down. <laughs> ah, Joe, I must say, you're looking very spruce. Have you got a date tonight with a lady pig? <laughs> you have, haven't you? Yeah. Aubrey, what's she like? Oh, a lovely bit of crackling. <laughs> Sick. What is all this noise? I, uh, good heavens. A pig. A pig in broadcasting house. Out. Well, he's not doing any harm. Out. Why, let me go again. Yes. It isn't part of our present policy to permit performing pigs to postulate in the precincts. He wouldn't postulate in anybody's precincts, <laughs> would he? Out. Well, if he goes, I go. Hooray. Why, I'll go again. Oh, I should think so. And the next time you want to bring your relatives here, Dodd, you get permission first. I have never known... <laughs> Hello, Roderick. What's all this now? This is Roderick, the duck. To... Well, I mean, I couldn't leave him in the house on his own, could I? I mean, and these days, it's very difficult to find a duck sitter. <laughs> You'd make a very good duck sitter. You've got the figure for it. Get it out. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 look, he's picking my nose. Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> yes? What? What's wrong? What's wrong? Two of your goats are in the woman's hour studio eating the script. I don't believe it. Even a goat couldn't swallow that lot. <laughs> look, look, get these things out of here. Well, Aubrey's the only one who can do it, and you've chased him. Well, all right, go on, bring him back. <laughs> Aubrey, Aubrey, where are... Ah, oh, there you are. Aubrey, will you go and tell all your mates it's time to go home now? All right, then. <laughs> go on, Aubrey. That's it. That's it. Here them up. Move them out. <laughs> what a smashing little pig he is. Look at him, chasing all the animals out. Yeah. There you are. Now, there, see? He's got them all out now. I think you'd better apologise to Aubrey. Yes. Yes, well, uh, uh, Piggy, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that won't do. You've got to do it properly. Go on, you know what little pig's like. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you don't, you don't, you don't yes, mean... Yes, I do mean. Sit him on your knee. Oh, oh but I, I, I couldn't. Oh, of course you can. That's it now. Go on, do it. Now, oh. take hold of his little trotter and say it. Oh, <laughs> very well. <laughs> This little piggy went to market. <laughs> That's it, Aubrey. And now, Maestro Dodd presents the all-time hit parade, the greatest songs in the world, songs that will live forever. Unforgettable song titles like this one. <laughs> that was the Teddy Bear's Picnic. <laughs> and how about this beautiful melody? Are the children asleep, dear? Yes, they're all asleep. Freddie, Joe, Harry, Tommy, Gordon, Douglas, Ronnie, Jenny, Rita, Alice, Maureen, Betty, Joan and Gladys. I can't stop loving you. <laughs> Oh, 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 
still for you broke my heart still though we're far apart I love you still still I've lost count of the hours I've lost track of the days I've lost nearly everything Since you went away Still after all I don't know who you're with I don't know where you've gone My only hope is that someday You might hear this song Still Today, as every sports fan knows, it's the anniversary of Britain's worst ever runner, Miles Behind. <laughs> he came last in the three A's final, last in the European Games, and he crowned a shocking career at the Olympic Games by collapsing before the race started. <laughs> which only goes to prove that. You can't win them all, in which Ken Dodd pays tribute not to the greatest ever, but the worst ever. Men who could never win, like Police Constable Doddlethorpe. Um, U Tree Lane, sir. Yeah. Yes, uh, U Tree Lane. Now, yes, U Tree Lane, sir. Yes, it's straight down, and it's the first on the. Uh, no, no, I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm a liar. It's the second. Yes, it's the second on the right, sir. Ah, uh, thank you, Constable. Not at all, sir. <coughs> Not at all, sir. That's it, sir. Yes, that's it. Straight down, sir, and it's the second on the. <laughs> no, the first on the right. Sir. <laughs> that's it. Yes, the first. Terrible failure number two. Mr. Doddington, the worst surgeon ever to set foot inside an operating theatre. Um, yes, well, uh, uh, how, uh, how, do, uh, how do you uh, feel, Mr. MacDougall? Not very well at all, sir. I can't understand it. Yes, well, you, well, you see, when I, uh, when I, uh, t t when I t t took your appendix out this morning, I, uh, <laughs> I checked up after the operation and, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm afraid we're missing one uh, tra tra transistor radio set. What do you mean? That well, the... uh, open your pyjama jacket. Oh, oh. Uh, that's it. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, tap your chest, so. It's nine o'clock and time for Housewives' <laughs> Choice. And now meet terrible failure number three, Dodini, the world's worst trapeze artist. <laughs> We 
which brings us to the true story of the world's worst scientist. I am he. Kenneth, I am he. It all... Thank you, sir. <laughs> Keep it up. It's you and me against them. <laughs> I am he. Kenneth, I am he. It all started one night when I was on my way home from a birthday party given for Professor Hines. He was 57. <laughs> I purchased an evening paper and I read directly below the government surplus offer of 6,000 pearls of Wren's officer's bloomers. <laughs> I read, wanted, young man as assistant to one of the world's leading scientists. I hurried to the address and knocked at the door. Who's there? A friend. Prove it. How? Slide money underneath the door. <laughs> <laughs> Will you take a check? I've got nothing against foreigners. Come in. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Professor Mac... What can I turn you into? It's I've the... come in answer to this advertisement. Let me see. <laughs> 6,000 pairs of Wren officers, bloomers. No, not that one underneath. The one asking for an assistant. Oh, you'd like a job, would you? Yes, please. Tell me something about yourself. Well, lately I've been working as a corkscrew model. I've got a nose for that sort of thing. <laughs> hmm. Before that, I was the chief test pilot in an Eccles cake factory. As regards to my family life, I'm an only child, and so are my two brothers. <laughs> what a refreshing change to meet a man of your intelligence after being with clever people. <laughs> First, you must pass an intelligence test. Fire away. What is the square root of a triangle? One and nine pence apiece. <laughs> what a brain. The job's yours. What about wages? Thank you, that's very kind of you. <laughs> As you probably know, I'm engaged on space research. In that case, you'll doubtless be interested to learn that I have found a way to counteract weightlessness. How? I've just swallowed a cannonball. <laughs> Congratulations! Don't pat me on the back. Have you any other inventions of note to your credit? Certainly. I was the one who invented collapsible rhubarb. For all the good that did us. <laughs> <laughs> I invented coloured fluff, wrinkle-proof tripe, and the very popular stomach brush. Stomach brush? I've never heard of a stomach brush. Obviously, you don't eat biscuits in bed. <laughs> very handy. <laughs> now, now, what do you, what do you, what do you think? What do you think of this? What is it? It's a, it's an everlasting mothball. <laughs> I'll have to let it go. All down, you one a Bunsen burner. Tom Mutchley, let's get down to some serious scientific work. Very well. I'd like to tell you something of the work that... Great balls of haggis. <laughs> what is it? Look, up there in the sky, a sort of cone-shaped object. Where? That's the wart on the end of your nose. <laughs> Fortunately, I just happen to have with me one of my latest inventions, a wart remover. Is it any good? We'll soon find out. Turn your head sideways. Oh! Clean as a whistle. Thank you very much indeed. Does that mean I can have the job as your assistant? But you know nothing about space research. No, just come outside, Professor. I'd like to show you something. There. Now then, what do you think of that? Great basins of porridge. A space rocket. Precisely. Step inside, Professor. Oh, where are we going? To the planet Mars. Blast off! <laughs> so there you are, tatty by Earth. <laughs> so I know nothing about space research, eh, Professor? Welcome to the planet Mars. What a strange and wonderful planet. Look at that tower-like structure. That, Professor, is the nerve center of the planet Mars. How do you know all this? Because for some time now, Earth has been peopled by Martians. You don't mean... Uh, of course I do. The black and white minstrels, they're all Martians. <laughs> Come on, we'll enter the tower by this door here. Follow me. <coughs> what a magnificent building. Do you see that control panel hmm? over there? Just look at all those knobs and levers. Quick, get down. There's a Martian coming. Oh, what's he doing? He's going over to the control panel. He's going to blow up the Earth. He's pressing the knobs. <laughs> We're in the tower hole of a black pool. You and your Mars. Well, we all make mistakes. I should have had more sense. May I have this dance? I'm going. Mind the mogging. I say you're the
Bertha. Yes? Which is the best way to bang her? Hit her with a bucket. Charming. <laughs> Taking part in the assault, you had John Murray, Percy Edwards, Ray Pell, Wallace Eaton, Jerry and the Pacemakers, and Judith Chalmers. The BBC Review Orchestra leader, Julian Guyard, conductor, Malcolm Lockyer. The script was written by Eddie Braben and Ken Dodd, and the show, which was recorded, was produced by Bill Wesley.